So what, what do you think about like, let's say the basic perception that I have, which is, so let, let me give you, let me give a very practical example about what I'm talking about. And so, you know, especially this is, this is interesting because the, the Georgia Guidestones were destroyed, right? Just in a few weeks ago or whatever, last week. And so, you know, according to the, 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 the legend, the person who had it built was named Christian R.C., and yeah, so, so, so you could say, so, so like it, in a way, it doesn't matter, like whether or not this is related to any group that is actually considering themselves Rosicrucian, it, there is something about the, the branding. There's something about the fact that normal Christians wouldn't refer to the Rosicrucians. But right now, something like weird, anti-human, uh, esoteric, like kind of occultist type thinking will attribute themselves to the Rosicrucians. Uh -huh. We can say like it's it's too bad or whatever, but there's something about that which I uh -huh. think is is important to understand in terms of this split that I talk about. Absolutely. Where and the, and the let's say the accumulation of this esoteric tendency into let's say Freemasonry groups or whatever. Right. Like trying to capture and Blavatsky was also was also kind of trying to pull whatever she thing, could yeah. from all that stuff. And so this is I think so it's like although I could I can, for example, in Robert, someone like Robert Flood, I can see, let's say, the power and the, the good intentions that are there and this desire to, to keep something magical and, 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 and wonderful about Christianity. It's like by the time you get to Crowley, it's like, oh, yeah. and, and all these people are seeing themselves in line with that same, that same mm -hmm. type of thinking. I'm like, something's off. Like something really went Absolutely. off. Absolutely. And I need to I need to not be too associated with whatever that is. No, you're right. And and with and so my doctorate, I did my dissertation. Um, one of the chapters is on it's kind of, in fact the title is the Rosicrucian mysticism of Thomas and Henry Vaughan, mm -hmm. because they were part of that initial 17th century movement. But if you and, and the the original documents of the Rosicrucians were written by a Lutheran pastor, and if you read them, they're as straightforward uh, Christianity as you can get, you know, it's, they were, they were just interested in the, the rebuilding of society. And some people try to say that they wanted to rebuild society in the scientific way, which is not true at all. Um, oh, it's your name. Uh, Francis Yates wrote a book, the Rosicrucian enlightenment. I think she got, she totally misunderstood what was going on. It was actually, like I said earlier, a kind of a traditionalist movement that didn't want to lose that um, traditional Western Christian understanding of the relationship of the microcosm to the macrocosm about God's presence in the world, about the presence of not angels and demons in the world, right? Yeah. Is, is contributing to even weather patterns, right? Um, which was all thrown out the window with Rene Descartes. And, and they were, in fact, they, 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 they would rip on Descartes in their books. <laughs> they didn't like him at all. Yeah, so, but this and, is but, legend but how does Descartes, it get from there? Didn't Descartes write a public letter trying to be initiated into the room? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Like, so they turned so him down. Weird. Good choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, good, I, I would have turned good. him down too. <laughs> I'm not answering that call. Yeah. But, uh, but it, it's funny because you read that and... So when I think of Rosicrucianism, I automatically think of that stuff. Yeah. Which is, I mean, when you read it, you can't see how anybody could interpret it otherwise. But then you look at the Crowley stuff and the, the Golden Dawn and that came much later. And as we said earlier, this, these appropriations of the term. In fact, even the, the idea of the, the Rose Cross there, and I think it's a good argument that, that the, the Rose Cross comes from the coat of arms of Martin Luther which had a, mm. a cross and a rose on it, yeah. you know? So who could be, some people think the RC means Roman Catholic. You know, there was a lot of discussion in the 17th century about whether this is actually the Jesuits trying to get Protestants to come back into the fold. <laughs> yeah, because, always the Jesuits. You know? It's always the Jesuits, right? Well, they were smarter than everybody, but, but I, so, I mean, yeah, so how does it get from there to, to, to what it became in the 19th century it's just or even the 18th century yeah. it's so strange but i think so it's really i think strange. we have to we really have to understand it as as this the incarnation it's like we often think of something which becomes decadent as always going too low but it it's actually always starts with going too high it's like there's pride pride is the first sin and so there's something about trying 
and you can see it like in the very rituals of the early uh, occultists and you know the the early magicians and the demonologists there's something very p- powerful pride in that right. in the very idea of let's say weaponizing or capturing these spiritual entities and yeah. inquiring from them or using them for to to manifest their will it's like that is some that is definitely something which I think represents that pride, which we right. then, which does. even though maybe it, it, you all do it for the good reasons at the beginning, right? It's like, you know, we're going to do this to help the world. We're going to, we're going to capture these demons in order to, in order to understand them and then exercise them from society. It's like that leads very quickly, in my opinion, to something. Absolutely. I agree. I totally agree. And I, and that's what I, I think, uh, well, like, like, in fact, in my dissertation, the first chapter is on John D. Who was pre- who was doing that precisely, and who got played like a game of Yahtzee by the by the spirits? <laughs> by these, he was, yeah, by these, yeah. By these oh, principalities that they just, worked like, him, man. They and he and he. The thing is, he was he was a good man, I think. Yeah, you know, he was like he's a guy who loved his family, loved his country, was you know doing all the right stuff. But as you said, his problem was his pride. You know, I am the one who will bring this to the world. Yeah. And he thought that he was going to recover the language of Adam and that would heal all the divisions in Christendom, you know, <laughs> wrong. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And of course the spirits talk him and, and his assistant to swapping their wives. Right. Yeah. 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 Which That's is, you, you don't get any more mortal sin than that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't get better after that. Let's just do them all. Repent. Yeah. Let's just get let's all this. It doesn't get better after that. It's like, but but I think but on the other hand you look at Henry Vaughn and his and his brother and there's a I mean especially in Henry there's such a beautiful practical spirituality in his poetry that's both connected to nature and to God and, and to Scripture I mean it's I remember when I when I so doing a dissertation you have to read everything the person wrote so I was reading all all this guy wrote and I'm and I read and done with oh yeah this is basically what I am. This is what I am. This is my spirituality right here, which is very simple. It's not complicated and it's not a cult in the least. It's very, but it's very mystical, I would say, in, in, a, in a practical mystical way. Yeah. You know, yeah. just not, you know, not a, hopefully not a prideful one, but, you know, what's important? God, his creation and community, right? The church, we call it the community of the church. And that I think from, um, you know, if you focus on what's important, <laughs> then, then you, you know, then you protect yourself, hopefully, from a little bit of evil. Yeah, well, definitely. Definitely.